what were the causes and effects of the Berlin blockade? That's the question you should be able to answer after watching this video. After World War II was over, Germany lost the war, the Nazis were gone, and Germany had to rebuild their political system. They had to have new elections and create new political parties. So until that can happen, the Allied powers came into Berlin, which is the capital of Germany, and they divided Berlin, each occupying one part. And you can see here in this map how on East Berlin was occupied by the Soviet Union. France, Britain, and U.S. occupied the western part of Berlin. Now, the idea was that the Allied powers would leave after elections were held and the Germans would once again rule themselves. However, before that could happen, a couple of things took place that angered the Soviets. The first was the Marshall Plan. You may or may not have learned about the Marshall Plan during the Cold War. Secretary of State Marshall uh, created this plan that America would give financial aid to Western countries in Europe to help them rebuild after the devastation of World War II. And the Soviets felt threatened by this. They felt that we were giving billions of dollars and building allies that way. Another thing the Allies did is while they were occupying Western Berlin, they worked together to try to create one currency for the people living there to make it easier for them, but the Soviets didn't like that either. So what the Soviets decided to do was create a blockade, the Berlin blockade. They blocked roads, railways, and canal access to Western Berlin. This made it impossible to bring in food, medicine, and other necessary supplies. Uh, this was potentially a crisis. The Allied powers, however, got together and they made a plan. So by this time, airplanes were in use and the Allied powers decided to airlift supplies to Western Berlin. And you can see here on this map how they created um, air paths to go into Western Berlin, bringing food, bringing milk for the children, bringing water, everything that they needed for the Berliners to survive. They did this every day of for nearly a year. Five to 10 tons of supplies were airlifted to Western Berlin each day. And the operation became known as Operation Vittles. Vittles is a nickname for food. Another thing that happened during this time, a little side story, was a colonel, an American pilot, one day had met a group of the Western Berlin children, and he was so impressed by them that they were so polite, they were so kind. Some of these kids were literally starving. Berlin was in a very bad state at this time. And, you know, he reached into his pockets. He had two sticks of gum. That's all he had. And he pulled it out and he said, kids, you know, this is all I have. Well, the children just broke up the gum into a bunch of little pieces, passing it out. Some children only got a piece of wrapper and none of them complained. He was so impressed. He said, listen, I'm going to come back. I'm going to fly my airplane and I'm going to bring you all candy. So the kids said, how are we going to know it's you when you come? He said, I'm going to wiggle the wings of my airplane. That's how you'll know it's me. So he became known as Uncle Wiggly Wings, and he flew several flights, not just one, bringing candy and treats for the children and dropping them over Western Berlin. Finally, May 12, 1949, the Soviets realized that their blockade was not being effective, it was not getting the results that they wanted, and they lifted the blockade. The, Soviet, uh, the Berlin blockade 
was over. The airlift had been successful. Okay, can you answer the question? What were the causes and effects of the Berlin blockade? All right, did you say that the causes were the fact that the Soviets felt threatened by the Marshall Plan and other allies attempting to create a united currency in West Berlin? And the effects of the blockade were that the Allied powers created an airlift plan, Operation Vittles, where they brought supplies to Western Berlin every day for 11 months until the blockade was lifted. All right, those are the major takeaways. And because you paid such good attention for the whole time, we've got a riddle. Where did Nicholas Romanoff II get his coffee? Hmm. Where did Nicholas Romanoff II get his coffee? Why, from Zorbucks, of course. Okay, guys, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching.